Hey, what's up? It's your girl, HJ, and I am so excited to be doing an inductive study of Galatians 5, 16 through 24 today with you guys. We're going to be talking about the war between the flesh and the spirit, or walking by the spirit. Um, I'm going to try to get this done in 10 to 12 minutes, so <laughs> right for you, girl. But whatever we do get, it can still change our lives as long as we let it go from our head into our hearts. So let's do this. Don't forget to subscribe, and let's jump in. All right, so take a couple minutes for yourself, pause the video, and you're gonna wanna put a star next to things that stand out for you, put a question mark next to things you might not understand, put an arrow next to applications, things that scripture tells you to apply to your life. Um, underline words, like already I can tell right here, spirit, spirit, spirit. These are words that are continuously repeating, so they must be important. So take a second for yourself, um, look at the scripture create a summary of what it is in your mind so when we look at it together you'll already have a frame of work for what's going on so you've looked at it yourself i've looked at it myself let's dive in together and see what we can find in the word but i say who is i it's important to know who's writing this and who the heck are they talking to okay you're saying something but who is it to um, if you read in the beginning of the book of Galatians, you can see that it is Paul, the apostle, who is writing to the church in Galatia. So these are Christians. Um, it is imperative that you know who the text is for. There's many different people that scripture talks to. It talks to believers. It talks to people who aren't yet but may want to believe. Um, it talks to uh, non-converts. It talks to Pharisees, people who think that they're pleasing God, but they're actually not living a life for the Lord at all. It's important that you know, because let's just say, for example, you thought this scripture was um, for non-believers, and that would lead you to believe that you think non-believers can be led by the Spirit, which is like super false and not true, and crazy things happen when we believe things that are not true about scripture. So it's important to have context. Paul is writing to Christians, to the Church of Galatia, and since we are also Christians, that means a lot of this is probably going to apply to us. Now. Walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. First thing that pops up to me is this word walk. It's not walked by the Spirit. It's not you stood up one time by the Spirit. This walk is like a continuous action. That seems kind of important. So continuously live or walk by the Spirit of God, right? So Spirit of God. Um, and you will not gratify or maybe give into, give into the desires of the flesh. We may not know exactly what flesh is just from this one sentence, but this part of scripture does tell us what it means, the works of the flesh. So, um, we're going to get more into that as we continue to read. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. One thing that I wrote down right here is that the spirit, or this is the flesh, the flesh has desires, and the spirit has desires. They both have desires. So if they both have desires, that must mean there's going to be choices to be made. Maybe there's a right or wrong way to do it. Um, yeah, so something's going to have to be chosen, right? Fork in the road here. For these things are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. I'm seeing the word against, or let's, let's highlight, let's really bring it out. I'm seeing the word against, against, opposed. So the word spirit, flesh, and contrasting words like against and opposed are being used really heavily right here. Um, then that's really the theme of what's going on. That must mean, since they are against one another, that the spirit of God and the flesh of a person can not live harmoniously. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. If you are led by the Spirit, this is an action that the Spirit is taking. So right here, we're called to take action. We're called to walk by the Spirit. 
But the beauty that I'm seeing in the scripture is we're not alone. The spirit is actually leading us down this path of righteousness. We're not walking alone in the dark trying to figure this thing out. Scripture is telling us that the spirit is leading us. It's showing us the right way. It's showing us um, God's will for our life, how to be, how to fight, how to how to fight this opposing battle that's going on. This right here, these words against, against, oppose. This is a battle that's going on, but we're not alone because we can be led by the spirit. So if you ever feel alone, boom, right here, this should really encourage you that we have a responsibility to walk. You do need to every day choose to walk continuously, but you have someone perfect to lead you. So that's awesome. All right, so we're in this second section right here, and you can normally find sections in scripture by what seems to kind of go together. Like, maybe it's not a perfect paragraph, but you seem like, okay, this, this would go together. So now, the works of the flesh are evident. Already, I'm seeing this word works is also just like up here, this walk, this is continuous. This is continuous. I promise my handwriting is not this bad in real life. Okay, this is a continuous thing that's happening. It's not like a one-time situation. The works, the continuous works of the flesh are evident in sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealous, fits of anger, rivalry, distension, division, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. Something popping out to me? and things like these. This is saying that the list continues. This is not an exhaustive list. Um, yeah, this is not an exhaustive list. One thing, when the first time that I read this, it, it kind of like blew my mind for a second because I was like, wait a second, these seem really intense and really heavy. And personally, yeah, maybe at some point in my life, um, but today in this moment, I don't feel like this really applies to me much because these are intense. But then I looked at it again and I went over every single one, which I encourage you to do for the sake of time we're not going to. But for example, sexual immorality. You may be in sexual immorality. I have before been as a Christian, um, but I'm not right now. I'm married, so that doesn't much apply to me. Um, but then it's like impurity, sensuality. Are there ever moments where I think impure thoughts? Are there ever any moments where I'm sensual or I have been sensual in my life? And sensuality, I love how it's distinctive from sexual morality. You can still be sensual, ladies, men, in the way that you look, in the way you talk, in the way you interact with the opposite sex, the way you dress, and not be having sex, but still displeasing God. Um, idolatry, how many hours a day do I spend on my phone? Um, and I barely read the Bible. Like, that is idolatry, my friends. Sorcery, okay, I'm, sorcery's kind of out there, but a lot of people would say that, like, um, anything that alters your mind goes with sorcery. Enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger. When do you ever just have, like, an angry moment and you lash out at your best friend or you lash out at your spouse or you lash out on the job? I know I do. Uh, rivalries, are you living in complete peace with every single person in your life? Dissensions, division. Have you been gossiping lately? Um, gossip isn't the biggest thing I struggle with, but I would lie to say that I've never gossiped recently in my life. That causes division, and that's something that is of the flesh. Envy, looking on Instagram, wanting other things that every other things other people have. Drunkenness, because drinking is a Christian liberty, it's easy to fall into this one. Um, maybe not as a continuous work, but still drunkenness is never good. Orgies seems like one that probably not many of us are struggling with, but hey, you never know. And this is not an exhaustive list. So this probably means, let me go sit down and pray about it and ask the Lord, um, what if this applies to me? And what if the sinful things that scripture talks about that isn't in the scripture particularly, um, that could apply to me in where I'm living by the flesh. Now to continue, <clears throat> I warn you, as I warned you before, as I warned you before, so Paul must have had a talk with them about this before, and so you can be struggling, Christian struggle, that those who do such thing will not inherit the kingdom of God. This scripture tore me up, because if you think about it, all believers will inherit the kingdom of God. Scripture tells us that. So... If he's saying, watch out, that you may not inherit the kingdom of God, 
He's saying, watch out. You may not actually be a Christian if you are continuously, because remember, this is continuous. This isn't a one-time impure thought, one-time sexual immorality, one time you were envious, one time you accidentally got drunk or you chose to get drunk. This is if you are walking continuously in the works of the flesh, watch out because you may not be saved, you may not inherit the kingdom of God. But, and this is where we get into section three, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. One, two, three, maybe all of them may have really stood out to you. Something personally that stood out to me is self-control um, and love. If we had more self-control, a lot of these things right here wouldn't be happening in our lives. This idolatry maybe with our phone, our video games, the idolatry of building a business um, and making that your main priority, the idolatry of your children in your life. I've seen idolatry of family, idolatry of good things, um, things that were meant to be good when they're not idols, right? This wouldn't exist. Enviness wouldn't exist. Sensuality, impurity, sexual morality, all of these things. If we had self-control because we can desire them, but choose to be controlled, to be faithful to the Lord and be faithful to those around us, to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, mind, and strength and not partake in these sins. So self-control really stood out to me. Um, whatever stood out to you, maybe write it to the side and pray about that later. Um, the fruits of the spirit are kind of self-explanatory. If you want to dive into more for yourself, you can have at it. Against such things, there is no law. In those who belong to Christ Jesus, so who who were those that belong to Christ Jesus? Well, believers. Those have been bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Um, have crucified the flesh. What does that mean? Have crucified the flesh. Well, where else have we seen the word crucified? Whenever Jesus was on the cross, put to death. So maybe we say put to death. And we've already established from this whole section right here that flesh is sinfulness or sinful living. So, and those believers in Christ Jesus have put to death the sinfulness of the flesh or their sinfulness, I'll say their, their sinfulness, with its passions and desires. Um, I love that scripture, it keeps it so real right here. Like sin sometimes is a real desire. It's a real passion that we want to partake in. But what does all of this talk about? This is a battle. They're against one another to keep you from doing the things that you want to do. But we can choose to walk by the Spirit. We can choose to be led by the Spirit. And instead of having continuous works of the flesh, we can have beautiful fruits of the Spirit. Last thing you wanna do is you wanna ask questions. You wanna sit and you don't wanna just learn, you wanna think about what you learned. Maybe a question could be, "Am um, how am I doing in the battle for my sin? And um, I can say maybe what are my things of the flesh that I am needing to put to death? What is in my flesh? <laughs> Self-reflect. Think about what's going on in your heart and allow scripture to not just be up here, but to fall into here and change who you are. Think about five questions that you could ask yourself. Pray about it. Never leave scripture time without really praying and seeking the Lord. I love you guys, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll be doing this every week, and I'll see you soon.